let's get something out of the way. This is what you read. That's not a word. That's, that was contrived by the media, first of all. So let's keep that out of the word frack, by the way, is just bringing hydraulic fracturing to a simple term, say I fracked a well, whatever. But the fracking and the implication that it has in the media is, is something I really don't want to go there. So the talk today is basically on the non-environmental aspects of hydraulic fracturing and how it works and how it came about. Now, uh, just so you don't think that I just read about this and I'm up here because of that, my background is I graduated from the Colorado School of Mines a long, long time ago when Jerry was uh, probably in college. <laughs> anyway, I graduated from the Colorado School of Mines, which is a very prestigious petroleum engineering program. And I graduated as a petroleum engineer and went on to postgraduate work at USC before I was transferred to Houston in a management program. My first job was right here in Huntington Beach. Signal Oil and Gas, Golden West, PCH, that's where I started my career. I was there for a number of years, transferred to Houston, transferred back, and then I moved on to Wilmington, worked in the Wilmington field in Northwest uh, Long Beach, did that for a couple of years. Then I moved to Newport Beach, didn't move there, but I, lived in, I worked in Newport Beach in the, the fire flood. The fire flood there is a tertiary recovery process where they actually set the reservoir on fire. You, when you used to be, drive down PCH, you used to smell the methane, the rotten egg smell. That was the oil wells off-gassing. Anyway, that's no longer. I moved from there in the early 80s and started my own company here in California, but I drilled in the Midwest in Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. We drilled there because out here the oil is too heavy. Better profit margins back there. I did that for a number of years, very successfully. The tax laws changed no longer as the investments in oil and gas. A limited liability became a general liability. So I got out of that and here I am with the business I have here. So that's my background. So I am intim intimately involved in this industry and intimately involved in hydraulic oil well fracturing. I did many fracturing jobs myself when I lived here and it's, it's a simple process, not a big deal. Now, there's two reasons to frack a well. And I use the word frack because that's what we called it. Fracking a well, but no K on it. There's two reasons to do it, basically. Originally, when a, when a well was drilled, if I can show you this from a plan view, from looking at it from the surface, here you have the oil well. You drill this well, and in the drilling process, you use a clay-based mud back then. In the, all the old days, in fact, you see a lot of this in the, in the industry papers, or in the, uh, a lot of the literature today, it says 90% of the wells had hydraulic fracturing. And that probably means we'll have 90% of the wells in the future have hydraulic fracturing. Probably not the case. In fact, almost sure it's not the case. The reason back then we, we fractured those wells right around the well bore is those wells were drilled with a clay-based mud. So as that clay was inject, uh, drilling, as that clay was injected into, into the well bore as it drilled it, that clay deposited its, its clay into the perforations of the well. That had to be cleaned out because you're reducing the ability for that oil to flow back out. Now, how many here think that a well, an oil well is a big cavern underground filled with oil? That's a pretty common thought. What it is, it's kind of like you go to the beach and your and your drink or your drink, your uh, cokes, your coke, your coke, your coke spills out of your coke spills out on the beach. Not Victoria, but everyone else's coke spills out on the beach. <laughs> she wouldn't have a coke on the beach. So that coke spills out on the beach. Does it just does it just pull up there or is it gone? It's gone. And that's the sand on the beach is the same as the sand typically in an oil well. That sand has all this porosity, this pore space that keeps all the oil in place. Now it can be shale, it can be limestone, dolomite, a lot of other rock will take that, that oil. That porosity in there is what keeps the oil, is, is the oil in place. And in that porosity is either oil or water, natural gas. Now, you gotta get it out. Now think of the ability to get it out or permeability, that oil to flow from porosity back to the well or wherever, think of that as like, uh, let's say you have uh, a whole bunch of people on a track and they all have a car in their driveway. Everybody's got a car, but there's no streets. You can't get out. You can't go on the freeway because there's no streets to get to the freeway. So hydraulic fracturing creates the roads, gets the cars onto the freeway. It's basically all it is. But back then, because of that clay-based mud, we had to be able to get it out. So a lot of the wells 
All the wells here originally in Huntington Beach had hydraulic fracturing done to them to get the oil back out. So if you have a well that's clay-based mud, if you drill that and then try to produce it, you're only getting about half the oil, half the percentage of oil through there. If you use the current process, which is a polymer-based mud, much better, then you're getting about 90% of the oil through there. That's why it changed from the old clay base, the leaving the sediment behind that would have to be fractured, now to a polymer base or a better way of drilling the, the wells and allowing the wells to be produced better, not leaving the sediment, and less chance of it being hydraulically fracked as a drilling process. Now, where this is done, I do have notes, even though I've done this a lot. I'm nervous. <laughs> really nervous. Okay. So I'll, I'll explain to you in a minute how it's done and, and really why it's done. But or we already explained why it's done. But what changed? Um, hydraulic fraction has been around again since Jerry was in college, 1947. <laughs> a long time. This is the type of fraction I just mentioned. In 1998, it became more important. Well, let's get back to this well again. So you have a field, and you've got a bunch of wells. You've got a, all over this field, you've got all these wells. And if, you've, if you fracture them, let's say it's now not um, sand, which flows a lot better if you expect the oil flows through it a lot better than shale. Like in the back in the field in North Dakota, that shale is very tight. Typically, as you get deeper in a well, things tighten up as, as you'd expect. The overburden pressure above the well, above the ground would, or above the well, well bore where the oil and gas is, that pressure would cause it to collapse more, I guess you could say. So that it's a tighter well, more difficult to flow. So you have all these wells out there in this field, maybe thousands of feet apart. And if this is shale, when you fracture a well with the old way with the, with the drilling mud, you're just getting a little bit around there, that flow. But now with shale, you have to consider the possibility of reaching out to the wells all over the field. So you not only, you not only have to worry about the fraction around there, you'd have to reach get the fracturing throughout the whole thing. So the, the method in 19, 1998 was developed for horizontally drilling, not reaching the other well, but reaching out toward the other well. Horizontally drilling, you can then fracture the shales, in this case mostly, and limestones, whatever, if you need to. Limestone has what they call a vug process, where, or a vug process, where you have these little uh, holes in the, in the limestone, and they need to be connected, simply said. So you need to reach out there. Horizontal drilling was established. I think Texas was the first place that was done. Oh, by the way, directional drilling, which is taking a well and, and changing the angle of the well and reaching the formation somewhere else, was originally established here in Huntington Beach. When you, all those wells on shore there at uh, PCH and Golden West, all those wells on shore are reaching out basically under the platforms that are out there now. The platforms are there to reach the shallower formations. We directionally drill to those those well or those locations from the surface. Here's the uh, the sand here. These are the wells here. You directionally drill like so to reach the formation here. These wells might be 11,000 feet long, but this formation is only maybe three or four thousand feet deep. So you have to reach these wells. That's what the horizontal drilling's for. You have to fracture the formation. That's what fracking does, and not with a K. Okay, so you have a well. This is a well bore here. This is the formation here. This, uh, let's say for simplicity right now, that this well bore to the formation, this is the surface, let's say this is uh, 5,000 feet down to this formation here. If you hydraulically frack that, and what that means when you hydraulically fracture a well, and it's called hydraulically fracturing because originally it was done with water. You inject water from the surface down to this formation, and by the way, you're protecting that with many ways of doing that with cement, with uh, packers, to make sure you're isolating that formation from surface formations or from the surface itself. It's really a closed system. And this is part of the problem I've been reading about. Uh, they think that we're going to damage rivers, we're going to damage freshwater sands. Uh, I guess the potential could be there to do that, but it's really a closed system. So this injection down here, and this, this sand that producing usually has something on top of that that won't allow any communication through that. That's why there's accumulation of oil and gas there, because there's nothing that allow it to move vertically. So you're, you're packing this off. You're separating, isolating this. You inject water under pressure. That water under pressure 
Uh, if a column of water, if this is full of water, that's about 0.433 psi per foot, pounds per square inch per foot. So down here, if this is 5,000 feet, that's about 2,400 pounds. So let's say 2,400 psi of pressure at this point of water, of a column of water. The land itself, this is simplicity here too, the land itself, all the overburdened rock, that's about one psi per foot. So now you have about 5,000 feet, 5,000 feet, 5,000 psi of pressure of land over, of overburden on top of that. So what you need to do is you need to overcome what they call fracturing gradient. You need to overcome the pressure to be able to break up that rock. Now, it's not going to be rubbleized. You're going to create what, fractures, as you can expect, like, uh, anybody not understand what a fracture is? I mean, I'm not sure I'm the analogy. Okay, I'm sure you do. Okay, if you have a depth like this, 5,000 feet, and you create a fracture, you have two, two pressures on you. You have the overburden pressure, which is about 5,000 pounds, and you have a lateral pressure, which in this case would be less because it's, the lateral pressure is less than a massive pressure over above. So what you do is you create a fracture looking from the surface. This is the well. You create a fracture that is vertical out from that well. So you, I have, a, have an actual vertical fracture because the pressure this way is less than the pressure this way. So you have fractures like this out through that well bore. Whether you're trying to do it from a horizontal well or whether you're trying to do it from a vertical well, that fracture is basically a vertical fracture going through there. Now, you create the fr fracture by pumping all this water down there. The water itself will create the fracture. As soon as you relieve the pressure, fracture closes up. So you add to that, that water, you add sand. Sand is a typical propping agent where the sand injected into that, that space will keep it open. So that becomes the, uh, the fracture, the new fracture that allows oil and gas to flow. In many cases, it's gas, uh, bacon field, or back and fields gas. But let's say instead of having that at 5,000 feet, let's say this is now, say, 2,500 feet, shallower. So we still have the same situation. You have 2,500 PSI of overburden. You now have about... Uh, say 1,200 easily enough of water pressure. So somewhere in between there, there's a fracturing gradient. Because of the depth of that, and because you have less of a problem with the overburden, no longer will you have the overburden pressure greater than the lateral pressure. And you create now, in that well bore, you create a, actually a horizontal fracture. No longer is a vertical fracture, but most likely it'll be a horizontal fracture. So it's like a pancake. Now, you've got to consider that because the engineers that are developing that fractured system very carefully determine if you're horizontally drilling a well, what its, what its effect will be on the surrounding area. So understand that you're drilling the well, you're, you're drilling it, and you need to fracture it because of the lack of permeability, the lack of those cars getting out of their driveway. Now you have to figure out what the effect is on it. So <coughs> the... Over these years, since I've been involved with it directly, the concept basically is the same. What's changed is the chemicals. It's changed what's the, uh, the ability to do it, uh, the effectiveness of it. Instead of using just a pure water in that fractured well, if you can imagine this, as you're fracturing that well with water and sand, the sand tends to settle out just because of the weight of the sand in the water. As, as the velocity stops, momentum stops, the sand will settle out. This, the water also will kind of dissipate through the sand because that's its general need. As the pressure is out there, it creates a fracture because of the high pressure. It still dissipates out through there. So what they've done, since I was directly involved, is they've made it more of a, uh, a gel. So it stays intact. Carrying the sand as a um, suspended in the gel, it'll stay in place instead of just settling out right away. And it becomes much more effective. Uh, chemicals added are like surfactants. Anybody know what a surfactant is? So. Right. If you wash your hair this morning, there you've got a surfactant. It's reducing the surface tension. So that's added to it to allow it more easily to flow through there. So these are the kind of chemicals added. Now, it's pretty safe. Uh, very safe, actually. But the, the problem is if you're trying to drill that well, or trying to have it, and here in Huntington Beach, we're at... Uh, about 1,200 feet, we have a water sand. 
the freshwater sand. Uh, about 200 feet, we have a salinity of the saltwater sand. Which a lot of the, this is about 200 feet here. This is about 1,200 feet here. This is where we get the water we eject back into the well, typically, one of the big sources. We don't get it from the ocean. We get it from that saltwater sand, which is fed through the ocean, obviously. And then down about uh, in Huntington Beach here, down about 35, about 3,800 feet is our oil sands, secondary gas sands. So you want to separate that. Now, whether we frack a well anywhere in the world or not, this is protected. This is basically the first time that a productive sand sees anything beyond its sand, if it's a person down there. First time it sees it, basically, unnaturally, sees it by drawing a well. You know, well, that could be bad. Well, how many remember, we well, don't remember, except Jerry. How many remember in the 20s, <laughs> when the oil was com coming to the beach, and they used to have these little pots of uh, cleaning fluids, whatever, so you clean your feet coming off the beach. No, nobody here remembers it, but that's what happened a long, long time ago, to clean your feet when you're coming off the beach, because I had oil in your sand. Well, this isn't the only reason it happened, but all of that oil is coming to the surface because of fracture. The Newport Inglewood Fault comes offshore here between Long Beach and, and Huntington Beach, goes on to Newport. It's part of this whole San Andreas system. That fault system is what created the reservoirs themselves and also allowed the oil to seep up through the sands all the way to the surface, through the sands, past the fresh water, past the salt water, through all those sands naturally seeping up through there to allow that oil to come to the surface, come to the beach, ruin your feet, and so on. So by reducing the pressure in the reservoir, this is only one way, but reducing the pressure in the reservoir by drilling those reservoirs out there, we actually got the, the oil off the beach. It's kind of nice. But every time you drill a well, this is the unnatural way of reaching that, that uh, productive sand. Every time you drill a well, you're in there very carefully, and there's probably no industry in the world that has more scrutiny than this one but there's a lot of regulation. Uh, the Division of Oil and Gas makes sure everything you do, and they test it, they look at the log. Everything you do about that well, no matter where it is, they're checking that out. So as you drill through that, that whole system here, as you're passing these things, you're plugging these off, making sure they're sealed off to that well environment. You reach another one, you're plugging that off, sealing it off until you get to the well here that you actually need. So once you have this one down here and you're doing your work down here, you're, you have the pipe going through the hole that's sealed off around the pipe, everything you do in here, it's really a closed system. It allows you to, whatever you're doing here, even overburden pressure increase or fracture gradient increase, it allows you to maintain activity here without having any real problem on the surface. So the safety is mitigated pretty much. Um, even the EPA said in 2011, Lisa Jackson, I think it was the name, would, said that uh, they've never seen any real problems with communication like that between the two, between the two zones. So I don't really see it as a problem. Um, potentially could be. I mean, it's a real dangerous environment. But it is so well protected, so well engineered, and so safe that uh, I'm happy to be involved with it. So you kind of understand a little bit more about how the process works? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.